Hey y'all, welcome to the Style Chronicles. I thought I would share some exciting news with you guys. Um, over the course of this weekend, my family and I, my children and I, acquired a dog. Um, it was kind of a, not really a spur of the moment thing. My husband and I have been talking about it. We've stopped and looked at dogs in the past, but it was one of those like, no, you know, we're not ready for a dog. I'm not ready um, to be the mother of a dog. I have a difficult enough time kind of keeping track of my children. Um, and my house, you know, upkeep and stuff like that, I'm like, no, no dog. I've been kind of anti-dog for a while. Even though we look, we will stop and look. We've stopped at pet stores and literally had to pry our daughter away from the puppies because we're not taking them home. We're just looking. And I know, you know, it's kind of, I told my husband, it's kind of mean, but, you know, it was one of those where if we found the right dog, we definitely would have brought it home. But we just, I don't know, my husband and I, we're back and forth uh, between the kind of dog that we wanted and we could never agree on it. And it was one of those, well, fine, if we can't agree, we just won't have one, period. I grew up with, uh, my childhood dog was a boxer named Tanner. And then after he, um, he got really old, I'd had him, my dad actually had had him since before I was born. And then he passed away while I was, I don't know, I guess in the six, eight-year-old range. And then after that, we had Jos, who was a German Shepherd. So I grew up with rather large dogs, and I loved them. I absolutely loved my childhood dogs. Um, they were the greatest, and they were big, and they were active, and they were fun, um, and my dad enjoyed them. You know, and I just, I, I know big dogs. And my husband, on the other hand, his uh, preference is small dogs. He likes Jack Russells. He had a Jack Russell when we were first married. And when he moved out of his parents' house, the dogs stayed with them. They were like, you can go, your dog's staying here. Um, so it's kind of like the family dog. And uh, he is very much, you know, still alive and, and healthy and everything. Uh, but my husband has always had this kind of, you know, I miss my dog, I want my dog um, soft spot. And because we couldn't agree on a breed or a size, um, it was, you know, we just, okay, we won't have one. Um, and I know, you know, it's, we don't have an enclosed backyard. I know I grew up on a rather large piece of property that had, a, you know, fenced in yard and everything. So my dogs got to run the yard. We don't have a fenced in yard. We have, we live on a golf course. So our yard opens off up, up into the golf course and we have no, we don't want to fence it in because when you sit in the backyard you get the sense of your yard is so huge because it's on the golf course and we love that and to fence it in I think would really take away from that it would take away from what we enjoy um, so we really did not want to go that route and I think even if you were to keep a large dog inside the house there would be times where you'd need him to go outside um, and roam on his own and we do have an invisible fence that's buried underneath and the dog wears a little collar and it shocks them when you know they go around it. We do have that. We haven't activated it or anything, but so, you know, we couldn't agree. And then over the weekend, my husband <laughs> was looking on um, the Bark website and Bark is a city of Houston um, program where, you know, animals, abandoned animals <laughs> are taken in or dropped off or, you know, however they acquire them, they are homeless animals. And um, there's cats and dogs and you go there and I mean, he was looking online at the website. You can go online and see, Bar I think it's bark.com, B-A-R-C. And there's all these animals. And you just feel, I mean, your heart, my heart was breaking for them as he was scrolling through them. And there was one, because we had, we had agreed that if we found a medium-sized dog, um, wire-haired, and I had always said, okay, I like the wire-haired Jack Russells. I was always pretty okay with that. Um, and then I just thought, you know what, I just want a scruffy dog. I want, you know, a dog that has a little beard that's kind of, you know, scruffy that my daughter can play around with and my son can play around with. Um, and as he was scrolling down the site, there was one dog that came up and we were just like, oh my gosh, he's so cute. And that was Saturday morning. And then, I don't know, we kind of just toyed with the idea over the weekend, talked about it a lot. Um, and Sunday, I was like, why don't you call? Call and see if he's available. If he's not available, you know, if he's already been adopted, then it wasn't meant to be. If he is available, we'll go see him. You know, maybe we'll like him, maybe we won't. I don't know. You know, maybe, you know, if he's there and everything goes okay, then he's meant to be our dog. And if not, then, you know, that's that's how it will go. We'll just keep looking or, you know, try again in a couple of months. 
So we went, we were there, it opened at 11, we were there in the parking lot at 11.30, waiting, not so patiently, with two children in the car. Um, it was raining, so it kind of kept them busy looking at the rain. But you go in this place and, you know, it's, it's really nice. There are so many people, you know, volunteers that run it that are super, super nice. Um, but it breaks your heart. And I, we didn't go in the cat wing because I, I don't like cats for one. I'm very allergic to them. Um, so I can't even go in that area. My husband was like, let's go look at the cats. And I'm like, okay, y'all can go. I can't. <laughs> but we didn't even go in that area. We went straight to the dog kennel. And it just breaks your heart. It really breaks your heart. The animals that they have there. And they're beautiful animals. You'd think, oh, it's, you know, they're vagrant dogs. Literally, they just dogs that got picked up or sometimes they do get left, left off by owners who can't take care of them or something like that but um beautiful dogs you think oh they're mutts so they're ugly you know they're whatever but they are gorgeous gorgeous animals so many of them you could tell were full-blooded whatever breed they were um crazy and some of them you know were mutts and you don't really know what they are the vets have kind of deemed them a certain you know speed a certain breed and, and that's kind of what you have to go by the one we fell in love with is very scruffy um, he had a cute little picture he looks like a wire-haired Jack Russell but he they call him a Tibetan Terrier mix which he's definitely a Terrier mix he's got Jack Russell in him we can tell I think he has a little bit of schnauzer in him um, but I'm not sure you know he was picked up Saturday morning I am not sure I think it was like overnight Friday Saturday, you know, morning. Um, he was picked up by a Houston police officer and dropped off at Bark over the course of the weekend. And it actually, off of a street that my husband and I grew up near and know very well. Um, and it's just crazy, you know, I'm like, wow, you know, he's got a little story. So already my heart was like, oh, I just feel so bad for this poor little thing. He's eight weeks old, cute as can be. Of course, when we um, first saw him, he was covered in fleas. I mean, they were everywhere, so he was, you know, it was kind of like, ugh. But he was precious, precious, precious. He has not opened up. He's only eight weeks old. He has not opened up. He's still a baby. He hasn't, you know, my husband's like, well, he doesn't really, um, some of the other dogs that people were holding were, you know, happy and, and licking, and this one just kind of, you know, is a little scared. And it's like I told my husband, they just picked him up. They just brought him in. He has not had time to even get accustomed to being around people. I'm like, I don't, you know, we don't know what his life was like before now. And it could have been very cruel. It could have been very, it could have been very nice. You know, it could have, I don't know. We don't know. Um, so I really think that once we get him home and he is loved and just taken care of, um, and my kids will literally pull that personality out of him, I think he's going to be a great dog. He's adorable. He's not here yet. Um, we went through a, the adoption process and everything. $75 to adopt an animal through Bark. And they come microchipped. And um, he's not home because he has to be neutered before they can give him to us. They neuter or spay the animals. He has to be neutered. So we're picking him up today after that procedure. But, oh my goodness, that was the hardest thing. My daughter cried rivers leaving the the bark facility because we were not bringing that dog home with us she's like we can't just abandon him here we can't just leave him he's already been left he's not going to understand i mean it was so heartbreaking but there was this girl um her name is addison she works at bark she's a volunteer there she doesn't work there she's a volunteer there she's 12 years old and she was there and i started talking to her and i asked her how old are you and she says i'm 12 and i said wow i said you know you volunteer here on the weekends and she said yes I, you know i love I love taking care of the animals. She's like, I like finding them homes. And I thought, oh my goodness, I don't know how she can do it. I would want to leave with every dog that came through that door, literally every dog. And she's like, well, I have some of them at home. She's like, but now I just want to find them good homes. And I was so impressed by this 12 year old. And you know, apparently she's been there for over three years volunteering with her mother. Her mother was there too, she's very nice. Um, and she made, you know, made us feel very comfortable, made my daughter interested in you know all the other animals there took her around kind of showed her things um and then when we were leaving you know we had to leave him there of course my daughter's just crying like crazy um and i kept telling her you know what addison's here she's going to make sure that he's taken care of that he's happy overnight i said you know and then we'll pick him up tomorrow after he has his procedure done and that's you know it so she was comforted by the thought that addison was there to kind of help the dog um a little bit to kind of you know keep keep an eye on him. Uh, I know she wouldn't be there all night and everything, but I just, you know, it was a nice notion. 
Anyhow, um, from there, after we suddenly adopted this dog, um, we left and went to PetSmart and got everything we needed, which was a lot because we spent like close to 300 bucks on just dog stuff. Um, but you know, a dog bed, a crate to carry him in, a leash, a collar, a tag, um, a toy. <laughs> My kids got him a little cow and then a little blanket that they loved. It's got a little paw on it. So he's got his own blanket, he's got his bed, we ha you know, food, a little chew toy, um, just all the basic kind of necessities that you need for an animal that you don't have in your home yet. But I wanted to share that with you guys because back here you will notice my laundry has to find a new home because that is where I stack up all of um, my laundry that needs to be done because my washer and dryer are right there. I kind of leave it all there, it kind of amounts, and then I wash it every Wednesday and Sunday, or Wednesday and um, Saturday. It has to find a new home because that is the perfect spot for, you can see it right there, there's a little mat and then a water bowl and a dog bowl. It's turned sideways so you can't see it, but that is where his um, feeding spot is. And it's just perfect because it's out of the way, nobody's gonna run into it. You know, that kind of protects it a little. Um, so yeah, that's what you're gonna be seeing now back there uh, in case anybody wonders. And I will show you a quick picture of him. My children named him Cracker Jack. Um, We'll probably just call him, we were going to call him Jack, my husband and I, but my daughter's like, no, his name is Cracker, so we're going to call him Cracker. And um, Cracker Jack looks like this. If you are an Instagram follower, you, you would have already seen him. I Instagrammed a picture of him the minute we first met him because he was just so precious. Um, but, I mean, he's super duper cute. Let's see. Here he is. This is... The first picture this is a picture I Instagrammed of him, and it's so sad because you can actually, you see him, you can actually see little black dots in his fur, and those are the fleas that he was covered in. You know, I mean, he had just been brought in, so they hadn't even had time to clean him up or really, you know, really treat him um, well or anything. Here he is. He's kind of peeking out of the window. And then, this is my husband kind of holding him. So he's, he's rather small compared to my husband's hand, but he's scruffy and he's just precious. And I just know that we'll give him, you know, a really, a really nice home. Um, so I'm very, very happy. I'm a little nervous. I have not had a dog in over eight years, neither has my husband. So I'm a little nervous as to how our family dynamic is gonna change only because, you know, now, we just up and go. We put our kids in the car and it's like, let's go. And we'll be gone the entire day and not really think about it. And that's going to have to change a little bit because we'll have him to think about. But here he is. My husband, after we had adopted him, uh, my husband was like, I'm going to bathe him right now to get these fleas off of him. So that's my husband there bathing him. And then you can see half of Eva's face over here bathing him there and they use Dawn I, it was the most interesting thing they use Dawn liquid soap like dishwashing soap to bathe them in and they said it kills the fleas you have to let it sit about five minutes but it kills the fleas so that's really interesting to know because I know you know we're big on or with our other dogs we were big on flea like shampoo and they said oh you know you can use Dawn it can get in their face and everything and it doesn't bother them um, and it's cheaper you know and it's just readily available so that's that and my husband there's him kind of bathing him some more and my daughter watching um but it's super super cute uh it's just so sad that the animals that were there i know you know when we got there they had a wall full of girl dogs pictures and then pictures of um of boy dogs male dogs on the other side and when we left the five pictures of the boy dogs that were up there were kind of gone and the female ones were mostly still left. I mean, there was over 30 female dogs on the wall and maybe only five of them were still up there. So all of those had been either, you know, played with or looked at or were out being looked at and the other ones were still in their cage. I mean, it's just sad, the amount of dogs. And this is my daughter looking at two of the other puppies that were in there really cute. This one, which I fell in love with after we had adopted our dog, I was like, I want to take him home too. He is so cute. 
Look how scrappy he looks. He just looks so cute. I love that scrappy look to him. And then this is um, Cracker after we bathed him. That's his little face. My daughter's holding him. I mean, just really, really precious. He's very sweet. He's just a baby, so he's really... Needs to be treated well. <laughs> needs to be treated well. It's so sad. And that's Eva and then my son petting him. Um, and yeah, it's like I said, it was sad to leave him, but we pick him up today. So there's that one. Um, I'm just so sad that these animals are just, I can't, I mean, I can't stop talking about how sad it was because it just broke my heart to leave there and not bring more home with us. You know, it's like, wow, I saw so many that I just wanted to keep. <laughs> Um, there's Eva holding him again. So yeah, he will be here tonight, um, which is good because I still have some things I need to clean up. I think I'm going to roll up our area rugs. We have some, like one in the living room, one in the formal dining room. Um, the formal dining room one was my mother's at one point. It used to be hers. It's a very nice, very expensive rug um, that I really don't want. You know, I'm funny about my children <laughs> being in that room with anything to drink. So I really don't want any accidents on that. And then our living room rug, which is a very modern um, kind of taupey tan rug that I don't want any accidents on. I mean, I know, you know, my kids have spilled stuff on it and stuff like that, and I can clean it up, but it's not pee, and that's different. So I think we're gonna roll those up and kind of store them in our extra bedroom for a little while until we get the dog potty trained um, to go outside. And that's, you know, kind of one of my, th one of the things I'm the most nervous about is I have hardwood floors, and I'm nervous about animal accidents only, you know, because that can warp your floors and really, really damage them. So. And I'm nervous about potty training a dog. It's a little nerve-wracking, uh, to say the least. And then I think I'm going to try and keep him out of our bedrooms for as long as I can because those are the only rooms that are carpeted in our house and I don't really want any accidents in there either. I'm kind of like, ah, I don't want that on my floors. Um, so yeah, little things like that. And then my daughter, who is a Barbie fanatic with all her little, you know, shoes and she's got like dishware that for Barbie so they're real tiny little things she has to keep those picked up and I actually think we're going to put them away for a little while um, at least until we get the puppy acclimated to our house and in the environment so just little things like that that we still need to clean up um, our garage which we need to kind of filter through because we do have a lot of toxins that are on the floor level that we need to move up. And I say that because our garage, um, we may have to keep him in there from time to time. Um, not to be cruel or anything like that, but just if we're gone you know, from the house for the day or anything like that um, in his crate. And eventually you know, we can let him roam the garage. Our garage is air conditioned, so don't think I'm going to throw this little dog into a hot environment or anything like that. We have a separate AC unit that is in our garage. Um, I don't know, I don't think you've ever noticed, I, I don't think I've ever opened the door, but there's kind of like a boxing, what's it called? Bag, bag and a speed bag and all kinds of stuff in there. And then there's some more like workout weights and stuff. Um, the gentleman who owned the home before us used it as a workout room and um, kept his dog in there too. He had a huge dog. Um, kept his animal in there as well. So that's why it's air conditioned. And then my husband, he's got his boxing stuff in there that he works out with and we've got weights and stuff like that so we can move the cars out. I like to keep my cars in the garage. I am not one of those people. I It aggravates me to no avail to have to walk outside to get in my car. Um, when I have a perfectly good garage that I can park them in. So yeah, I like to park my garage, my cars in the, in the garage. I just like to get in and go. Um, I like it. I don't have to get wet or get hot or cold going in and out of my house. Um, and I feel secure doing it that way. So we use it as a garage, but then we can move the cars out and use it as a workout room and air condition it and everything. So definitely when we put him in there, it would be air conditioned. I would not throw him in there in the heat. Um, or anything like that, ne not, never uncomfortable. So that is kind of where we're at. Um, 
Yeah, I'm nervous. Are you nervous for me? Um, I know my children are going to be... Yeah, I don't know that, do I? They're going to be good about it. They're going to be... Um, my daughter will be cautious um, as far as how she treats him, not rough. My son, on the other hand, kept trying to poke his eye. And so I was like, yeah, this is not... I mean, this is going to be difficult. Um, so, you know, just teaching them about a dog and how to handle them. They've been around dogs. Um, it's nothing too new. It's just we've never had a dog in our house. So, yeah. I need advice. Um, anyhow, that is that. I will definitely share him with you once we have him home um, and he is here and, you know, happy and everything. He's scrawny. He's skinny. He needs to be fed, you know, and loved and just hugged and treated nicely. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.